Hello, everyone. And I have the amazing Tina Raffa Mulligan with me now to celebrate International Children's Book Day. And I just want to give a little bit of an insight into this amazing author and woman that I so enjoy having conversations with. And you lucky guys are going to get to get a bit of insight or info into those kind of conversations that we have around books, around illustrating, around all things children's book, because Tina has been a children's book author for around 50 years now, Tina, is that correct? And that's when I started writing, yes. See, isn't that amazing? So, so um, for me, Tina is a really big inspiration and I adore um, her work. And wait till you hear how many books this lady has published. And, and, and we have so many of, of, we're blessed to have Tina in at Serenity Press. One of my favorite books and my kids' favorite books is Friends. We, we adore it. And a book that we haven't published, actually, Who Dresses God, is another book that we absolutely adore and it creates beautiful conversations in our home. But Tina, can you just share with everyone who you are, how long you've been, been writing and what authorship means to you? Wow, that's a big question. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it is. Okay, uh, I knew from the time I was a kid in primary school that I wanted to be a writer. I grew up surrounded by a family of natural storytellers and I was captivated hearing the stories that they told me. As soon as I learned how to read, I realised that books were a window into another world and I couldn't get enough of the stories that were out there. So I started writing my own stories as soon as I learned how to read and write. At the time, I was also obsessed with ballet. So I had this big idea I was going to be a famous ballerina. I was going to travel around the world. I was going to dance in all the major theatres in the big cities and in the dressing room between performances. I was going to write books. Now, I didn't think of writing kid books at that stage. And of course, uh, reality stepped in and the ballerina dream didn't happen. But I never lost my obsession with books and writing. So when I became a mum at the age of 21, of course, I read to my son from the time he was able to listen. So he was just a baby in arms. And I would read him my favourite poetry that I remembered from school and I would read him kids' books. And that's when my idea that I would write for children came into being. So I forgot all about being the famous novelist and living in some kind of a garret in Paris <laughs> and became a mum. I had um, two more children after my son and they inspired me to continue writing for children. And that's oh, basically what I've been doing ever since. I love it. Well, kids are an absolute gift, aren't they? And to be able to nurture and feed their minds with, with amazing content is, is, is a privilege in life, isn't it? Tina, Tina, what was your first book, children's book that you wrote? And then, and what was your first one that you published? Okay, all of the first children's books I wrote didn't get published. I got yeah, lost. <laughs> <laughs> Got lots of encouraging comments from publishers, but I didn't get a yes. And then after about 10 years, I had a Stranger Danger book published. And for about five minutes, I was famous because of the topic, I guess. It got a lot of publicity. I was interviewed, radio, TV, magazines, newspapers. The book was endorsed by the state premier of the time and the education department. And it was used in schools around the country. And I thought I'd made it as a children's author. <laughs> but it took me 15 years to get my next two books published. Fortunately, after that, things did improve a little bit. And uh, I did take a detour into journalism along the way. So I was always working with words and always writing absolutely and and to have that insight and that experience it, it all is it all is wonderful for for an author to have that and to know what you need to then you know how to be visible through that but your five minutes of fame certainly sounds more than five minutes of fame. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's living the dream in that moment, isn't it? And, and that's the thing is our books are, you know, our, we have our authorship um, and then, you know, your books are a product of that authorship. And, it, you know, there's going to be successes and some not so much successes, but to actually create them and deliver them to the world is a success in itself, isn't it? It is. And one of the surprising things that came out of that first publication all those years ago was I started getting invited to go and talk at schools. And I discovered that I absolutely loved that as much as I loved writing the stories. And it has been one of the joys for me of being a children's author, being able to visit all sorts of schools and libraries and just talk to kids about how much I love books and writing and reading and encourage them to write their own stories. Oh, and you used to go on character, didn't you? Oh, I did, yes. <laughs> For a long time, I dressed up as one of the characters in one of my children's books, um, Madame Amazia the Gypsy. Yeah. And the only reason I dressed up as her was because I happened to be doing belly dancing at the time. So I had long skirts and I had a bolero with beading on it and fancy belts that jangled. And I found that when I was talking particularly to the very young kids, that caught their attention because he was someone who turned up in a costume and had jangly coins on a belt and could get across the message that in your imagination when you're writing stories, you can go anywhere, you can be anyone, and you can do anything. Absolutely. I just love how you just slip in there. At the time, I was doing belly dancing. No. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Just in awe. So you didn't go with the ballerina route, but went, like, it's just amazing. And it's all about life experience and enjoying life, isn't it? And, and taking these moments to explore and be curious about things. It's just so fun. And then to create the character of your own out of it, it was just it's so beautiful. Tina, have you any um, advice for anyone watching this who's aspiring, who's thinking about going into authorship? Just write your story and don't worry if you think you can't do it because you don't know unless you try. It's a learning experience. Even after all these years, I'm still learning all the time about writing, about publishing. I'm now exploring, illustrating. So if you want to write, just pick up your pen and pencil, turn on your screen, write whatever comes to mind. And don't worry if you think it's not good enough because the rewriting and the editing process is more important than that first draft. Also, if you can't get started at the beginning, start anywhere you can. You can always write the beginning after you've finished writing the end. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I adore um, about you, especially whenever you work with Veronica, sorry, this is a much loved version of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably scrubby marks all over it. I think it was red last night. But like Veronica Rook and you are like, it's like heaven because you live a few doors away from each other. But whenever you worked on Friends, like it's just the most adorable book. We're a bit shiny here, but, you know, look at these characters. And this the words may seem simple, but they are they, they have big impact and that they share knowledge with, with kids and things like that. Can you tell us what it's like to work with illustrators? Not always do you get to work so closely with an illustrator, do you? No, sometimes I don't even see a book until it's finished. Uh, I had three publications with an American publisher and uh, one of the books in particular, I didn't see any of the illustrations until my author copy turned up. And there have been a number of other occasions like that. But one of the beauties of working with Serenity Press and Daisy Lane Publishing, the other small publisher that I work with, we're encouraged to actually work closely with the illustrator. And Veronica and I have been friends for decades. <laughs> it is lovely that she lives up the street and when we do get together, what I usually do is just hand the text over to Veronica and say, see what you can come up with with this. So I like to 
give the illustrator the opportunity to have creative input because that's what a picture is it's collaboration absolutely and and like veronica is so fun and she sees things deeper and she almost connects with the reader or the child and what they what you know the that what they want to see in the page and you know as as much as the words bring the words to life and that's what i adore but there's a certain magic that happens between an, an author and illustrator when there's a connection it doesn't always happen but when it happens it's magic and it brings a book to life in a very special way and that's why i always um promote it that i'm not going to be the block you know the press isn't going to be the block to allow that magic to happen and let's see what happens through it because you're both professionals you both know the industry and and that's why the freedom's there the free reign well the good thing about working veronica is she has such a lot of industry experience and she will come back with her own ideas friends for example i did not envision a koala as being a main character and it wasn't until Veronica came back with those illustrations that I thought, yes, we do. We need one character that's consistent throughout the whole story. And she also brings humour to the illustrations that she creates. So it's lovely for me to hand my words over to someone like her and then have her come back and see how she's interpreted it. Absolutely. And, and, and that, that is it just because Veronica just has this imagination and she runs with it and comes and just, what do you think? And you're going, wow, I never <laughs> thought of that. Isn't it just a, such a special thing to, to see that in motion? It's like a genius in motion, you know, and bringing the words to life. And that's what an illustrator brings to a book, a good illustrator. And that's what we find. So, and, and, and an author who is, who has a vision, shares the vision, but isn't so tied to the vision that it can't be evolved from that point as well. It's beautiful. We have another book coming out shortly with Serenity Press in the next month or two. Do you want to share with us a little bit about that? That is a collaboration with Amy Caluti. Uh, did I say her name right? And Amy, again, is uh, I love her illustrations. And again, I just handed over the text. It's called Looking After Grandma. And she's come back with something quite beautiful. There's all pastel colours. She's put her own creative interpretation to the text. And it's a story about a, a little girl coming to terms with the fact that the grandmother that she has known so well and spent so much time with is changing because she has dementia. It is a special story for me because it was inspired by my mother's experience of dementia many years ago. It took me a long time to find a publisher who wanted to put the book out. But now I realise that if it hadn't waited that long, then it wouldn't have had the illustrations that Amy has created for it. Beautiful and they're soft and they're pastel and vibrant. It's just perfect, isn't it? We, we both see it, it is. and we're just like, wow, it's perfect. <laughs> and, and Looking After Grandma was a book that I remember you presented to me a while, many years ago. Um, and then it just wouldn't leave my head. And I was like, do you know what about that book? And, and you, you remember you said, do you, do you still want to put it? And I was like, absolutely, let's get it started. <laughs> so um, yeah, looking after grandma will be out into the world in the next in the next month, I reckon. So we'll set a date and we'll have a bit of a celebration on this page. Tina, thank you so much um, for joining me today and for inspiring our audience and happy International Ch Children's Book Day. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.